I uh, was approached by one of the members on the floor, actually, uh, Marcy Kepter. She said, why don't we go out and tell the story of people? Why are we being quiet about this? And so I was pleased when uh, we presented this idea to you that you said, hey, come, I got an hour, let's talk about it. Because over the past six weeks, we have fought to try and get these uh, benefits extended. And we cite the statistics of two and a half million people have lost their benefits for the last June, but we haven't heard much about these jobless workers themselves. And I'm really grateful for an opportunity to come out here and talk about what we are all going through in our district, on the telephone, in the newspaper, in the grocery store. But I picked up the New York Times on Sunday, and there on page 13 was the story of a woman named Terry Sandler. Now, Terry lost her job at an automotive parts plant in October of 2008. She used to make $14.65 an hour and was able to make ends meet, but since she's been laid off, she's had no luck in finding a job. She's like millions of people who have this same story who can't get anybody to pay attention in the United States Senate. Now, there are five million Americans at least competing, or five, uh, five people competing for every job, not five million, but five people. And she told the newspaper when they asked her that she had three interviews. That's all she'd had in 18 months was three interviews uh, for a job. And she spends as much as 12 hours a day looking on the internet. When Republicans in the, uh, in the other body blocked passage of the unemployment insurance, she lost her only lifeline on June 5th. She's had no money since June 5th. And she's been able to cobble together some help from her friends and the community in order to get by. A county ministerial association paid her water bill. I mean, imagine not having water in your house because they shut it off because you didn't pay the bill. And a local nonprofit pulled together enough money for her last two electric bills. Imagine sitting in the dark in a house with no water and no electricity through no fault of your own except the United States Senate won't pay attention to your problems. Now, Americans who've worked hard and played by the rules and lost their jobs through no fault of their own are going through this all over this country. She's rattled by the daily fear of losing her home or of not being able to afford food and told the Times that she had contemplated suicide. Republicans have forced Terry to live in purgatory for the last two months as they talk about the deficit. They now worry about the deficit. They spent like there was no end of money when it was for people at the top, but now we're talking about Terry Sadler and her problems. The New York Times actually wrote an editorial, deficits matter, but not more than economic recovery and not more urgently than the economic survival of millions of Americans. Now the question you have to ask is, what will it take to make the Republicans, you'd think an election might have something to draw their mind. In today, we read a story in the Washington Post that Montgomery County, one of the five richest counties in the United States, is now serving 15,000 free lunches a day for children who would otherwise not have food. That's an increase of nearly 15% over previous summers, and many of these families are unemployed families. Now, one failure to get this bill passed has had a very real and immediate consequences. Tonight, thousands of people in every corner of this country will suffer because Republicans in the other body have stonewalled against acting. I refuse to believe that we're going to tell Terry Sadler and the millions of Americans like her that we're going to let them fall through the cracks. I wore this pin tonight because I believe that anybody who has lived in a home where somebody was out of a job or has been out of a job knows what it's really all about. I fail to believe there's anybody in the Senate who's ever been without a job. I got this, it's a, it's a cab medallion. When I was 21 years old, my father lost his job for the second time and there was no money to pay the rent. We were gonna lose the house. There was no money for the food or anything else and I went to work driving a cab. 
That's what happens in families. People do anything. Terry said to the newspaper, she's sitting at home now. One of her interviews was for a company that will pay her $7.65 an hour. Now remember, she was making 14 before. They're paying less than half that. And she's sitting there waiting to hear if she gets a job. She knows that the money she gets from that lesser job won't even meet her bills, won't make it possible for her to pay her house payment and pay her utilities and pay gas and pay the internet so she can stay on the computer and keep looking for a job. That's the dilemma that Americans are sitting at home tonight living with. Middle class people. It isn't people who haven't tried. It isn't people who haven't made an effort. It isn't people who have somehow tried to get by on the easy. They have been out there slogging along and they suddenly can't do it. And the Senate says, well, we have to worry about the deficit. You know, we want to keep those tax cuts going for the wealthy in this country. That's $700 billion, but we haven't got $30 billion for the unemployed. There's something really wrong, and it's really important that you brought this special order together today so that people could talk about it and talk about what they're hearing on the phone when they go home on the weekend. It's no fun to go to the grocery store because people come up and tell you, and I don't live in a bad neighborhood, but people are telling me in my neighborhood what's going on. Thank you very much, and I yield back. I thank